coming live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. I missed out on another really cool interview. Harley had a chance to talk to Dr. Devin Denny about a really cool program, a really cool program called Everyday Earth. I'm Brett. And I am Harley. Once again, you came in in the clutch with little to almost zero notice and hit, aimed for the fences. And I think you hit the at least the base of the fence. I don't think you went over. I think I hit the bench. You hit the bench? Well, <laughs> uh, sorry. It happens. You have to understand, I'm on call. You and this baby. I know, right? When I had the chance to go, Biggest I Biggest excuse. I've, I don't know how many times you get to use it. The kid's going to be 19 and you're be like, hey, man, I can't make it. Carson, but, okay. Carson has a tummy ache. But everyone loves babies. Well, almost everyone. But most people love babies. And if I throw <laughs> him out there, it, and you've seen pictures of him, you you, you can associate who he is. How do you say no to that? How do you tell his father, sorry, you got to come in anyway? You can't. You can't, and you won't. Okay, but since he's been born, every time you show up, he's with you anyway. He's with me, but so he's being held by your significant other. So you're, <laughs> I'm sorry, you are you have a vested interest now. I don't disagree. The kid's cute, but he's cute. He, it's, a, it's a kind of a lame excuse at this point in time. You it's, just throw him in a backpack and you bring him with. He's, it's a tired excuse. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I will say he he screamed nearly the entire way here. Um, he I think he peed on Madeline. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a a fun filled adventure for sure. But I'm I'm glad to be back and uh really looking forward to this interview because I like the concept. Uh, interactive at home. Every all the kids are doing all the kill kids are doing it right now. I lo- I really like the efforts that they've taken to incorporate things that kids in this area would be familiar with absolutely and again there's some really cool angles don't want to spoil spoil anything but like i said it's a great a great interview uh, and a great program we'll get to that right after this today we're pleased to welcome geoscientist author educator producer host dr devin denny welcome to the show well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So you seem like you have way more credentials than I'm comfortable going over. <laughs> uh, you, 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 I guess it depends on how you define credentials, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> so you are one of the producers of a new program called Everyday Earth, which is a STEM-based online video program. Is that right? Yeah, so Everyday Earth is an interactive video program for teachers and students. I'm, I'm a geologist by background, geoscientist, study the earth. Uh, and, you know, I live in Oklahoma and just over the years going to school here, uh, living here for, you know, for a long time, just kind of fell in love with the landscape and the history of the place. And this surprises me. People drive by hills and drive by creeks and streams and rock outcrops and, and don't pay too much mind to it unless you're really attentive. But there's stories to be told there, you know, things that happened long ago. And we realize that, you know, students don't have a lot of exposure to that type of earth science education. So several years back, we did, you know, long before there was a COVID-19 or or any other sort of demand on online learning, we decided to put together a program called Everyday Earth and take folks around Oklahoma and the, and the Oklahoma region. Uh, it, it actually goes beyond Oklahoma a bit. Uh, just just to take some field trips and, uh, and kind of understand, uh, you know, what these stories in stone are out there around us and, and why they're important. So Everyday Earth, is that's what it is. It's an online program. Uh, it's interactive, so that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I could sit and watch videos all day long, and I would probably find that interesting. But this is a little bit different. And we have a storyline um, around this everyday earth core of scientists, and you are a participant in this. And you, as you watch the various movies of us going around, you get to participate with us in these science investigations. So stop at a rock, look at a rock do things so, so it's, it's kind of cool that way well it sounds cool but how exactly are you making it interactive 
Um, can can you kind of give us some behind the scenes? Yeah, so, you know, we produce it very much like you would produce a, a movie or a television show or, or any other any other video. Uh, we have a crew, myself and, and, and others, go out to uh, locations around Oklahoma and we shoot segments of that. Uh, Todd Kent is uh, the producer uh, of Everyday Earth and, and um, we go out and scout locations, find these places and tell these stories kind of piece by piece. And then we have some software behind the scenes that we can actually stitch together in sort of a, uh, a, a decision tree, so to speak. So if you've ever gone out and watched Netflix, they have a new interactive service, and you can see various interactive programs where as you watch, you make some choices, kind of yes or no, left or right. And it, it, the outcomes of your choices guide you through what could be different outcomes for the video. And so we've taken the same technology and applied it to you know, rocks in Oklahoma. And so I might, you know, have a fork in the trail and want to go left or right. And that could influence the rocks I see or the trees I see or the hills I see. So, so it's like, kind of fun. It, it's a challenge to edit this stuff and put it together. It really is. But it's 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 fun to kind of see it all laid out. So it sounds a lot like the um, old school choose your own adventure comic books uh, style. Is that kind of what you were going for? It, it it that is very that's a very good description of how it works. Yeah, it it really is um, a, a decision based um, uh, interactive adventure is what I like to call it. You know, where where you you are kind of in control of your own destiny, so to speak. Now we when we're working with teachers and we're working with uh, administrators of schools, one thing we have to assure them is that we've cleverly designed it in such a way where the students don't actually miss information that's important. So. If, if I'm going to learn about evaporation or precipitation in, in one of our modules where we talk about that, then they're going to get that information, and they might get it in a couple of different ways depending on how that plays out. Um, and they might access it through different pieces of data. And, and they actually go and gather the data themselves through the interactions, and they sort of track how that data fits together and, and then reason, you know, which of our hypothesis of what's going on here makes the most sense. So it, it fits really well with science teachers, but to be honest, it's it's great for everybody. Homeschoolers uh, are using it, you know, individual users are using it, and it is free. So we work with Oklahoma corporations, and they help us fund the production of Everyday Earth, and they make that available then for free to, to schools around Oklahoma. So it works out well for everybody. Well, it's it, again sounds really interesting. I I do want to back up just a minute though. It mm -hmm. it sounds like you guys are having to do a lot of production that I didn't see from the the get go. If you are covering the bullet points in a syllabus uh, for a class, and it doesn't matter which trail the the student chooses or what actions they they choose to do at at one particular time, they still cover all of the information. So the the amount of moving pieces there has got to be huge. <laughs> you have to manage it. If you don't do a lot of work up front with the script and kind of storyboard these things out, yeah, it could get away from you pretty quickly. If it was a fictional story and I really wanted to have you know, a really wide variety of endings, for this, you know, you wouldn't necessarily be seeing the same things that you need to see to teach with. But the way we work this, it's almost like uh, – if I'm hiking down a path, uh, you know, and I, I can take little side loops, you know, some side loops I can take, some side loops I can skip. But at the end of the day, we end up in the same place no matter how you go. And so that's how we, that's how we do that. That's how we make sure that they get the education components in there. Um, but it still feels to them like they're doing something. They're actually out with a geologist looking at a scene and trying to interpret what's going on. It sounds but Yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like a lot of work. Uh, it also sounds like this is really something that would be uh, good for any student from any location to take part in, but for the students, for the people accessing this from Oklahoma, they're going to see a lot of familiar sites. Turner Falls, Devon mm -hmm. Tower, that sort of thing. Do you have any favorite Absolutely. places that you've been through uh, through this process? Um, that, that you want to share any stories about? 
I think we have um, crisscrossed the state several times at this point. You know, Oklahoma has some really, really amazing geology. Believe it or not, people come from all over the country to the Arbuckle Mountains in south central Oklahoma um, because it's the history that's exposed there is unique in America. Um, the very old mountain ranges. I like to tell the stories of, of you know, mountain ranges the size of the Himalayas in Oklahoma and how it's there were so it's been so long and you know that that those have been eroding away that just the nubs of those mountains are left. But uh Turner Falls is a great one. Um uh, Turner Falls is a beautiful place, but it's very unusual. Uh, most people don't realize that you know most waterfalls form through erosion. So as water comes over the side of a cliff, it erodes back, and that waterfall kind of migrates upstream over time. Turner Falls is the opposite. It actually grows downstream because it forms through a different process. It's actually constantly depositing new rocks. So every time you go to Turner Falls and look at it, it's a bit bigger, a little bit different than it was before. It's physically growing as you watch it, <laughs> okay, well, um, which is very unusual. So, what is the process behind that? Mind blown? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so, 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 uh, well, yeah, no, it's a great story. So all of the water in the atmosphere, uh, absorbs a little carbon dioxide. So it becomes slightly acidic. You get carbonic acid. And as that falls on the limestones of the Arbuckle mountains and percolates through, it dissolves some of that limestone into solution. So it's carrying a little bit of liquid rock with it. And it's got some carbon dioxide with it as well. And, and over time, eventually, that water makes its way out the side of the hill and springs, and we get Honey Creek, which is the little creek that feeds over Turner Falls. So we've got a nice little creek, super saturated with calcium carbonate, this limestone that's been dissolved by this acid rain, so to speak. And as it flows, it wants, it's slowly losing some of that carbon dioxide gas. And when it goes over the the crest of Turner Falls, something cool happens. It's kind of like if you turn uh, the top off of a soda bottle, all the gas comes off. And because of the, the gyrations and the turbulence of the water, and that causes the water to basically say, oh, oh man, I can't hold this limestone anymore. And so it pops it right there at the crest of the falls. Wow. And so you get this sort of, um, you get this sort of, you know, it looks like a slide. You know, it looks like you could slide down and it's travertine which is banded limestone that forms almost with every layer of water that goes over. It's laying down a few atoms. Huh. Uh, and over time, it grows and grows. So it's a very unusual kind of kind of cool thing. It's more like a cave and how caves grow stalactites and stalagmites versus yeah, Niagara Falls or something like that. I've been there many, many times, and I had no idea. Somebody needs to put up a sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's my, I think that's why we wanted to do this. You know, there's so many cool stories like that, you know, and, and sometimes people know it's some, sometimes people are completely oblivious, but nature's fascinating. It's very dynamic. It's always working. Um, you know, I've been to several places, got multiple times, Turner Falls included, and it's never quite the same twice. So it, it's a neat world. And, and Oklahoma's got a lot of neat places like that. It it does, and and that's one of the reasons we started the show is there's just so many hidden treasures through the state of Oklahoma that the vast majority of the residents have no idea about that uh, we right. we really wanted to kind of focus and highlight some of some of the more fun and interesting aspects of the state and it, you guys are doing a great job so your pro your program is produced by the Oklahoma Geological Foundation is that correct uh, our company is called Esteem. It's the Esteem Company, and, and we produce educational videos. We partner with the Oklahoma Geological Foundation to produce Everyday Earth in Oklahoma. Uh, so there are partners. I'm actually a, 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 a director on the board of the foundation as well. So, yeah, we've partnered with several large companies and small companies and foundations here in Oklahoma, Devon Energy, Chesapeake Energy, uh, several energy companies, several foundations to, to put this together. People, uh, corporations have been very generous. They, they, they see the, the possibilities and, and where this could go. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this now for about two years and we have two of our 10 planned episodes or what we call missions because there is a storyline. It's, it's, it's interesting. I think, uh, the kin anyone from kindergarten up to about sixth grade finds something with our story that, that's fun or silly or fascinating, but 
we do have a bad guy. Um, you got to have a bad guy if you're going to have a story. <laughs> and we have a, a bad guy named Dr. Desmond Discord, and he is uh, after a mythical, a mythical mineral called estimite. And estimite uh, is the uh, power that runs a couple of special pieces of equipment that we have. One is called the Terravator. And the Terravator is a refurbished soda machine that can travel through matter and up, down, left, and right. So, of course, when we need to go look at a magma chamber, you know, there's, it's hard to do that from, from downtown Oklahoma City without some way to travel through uh, to see it. So we have a soda machine that'll take us there. It's a little bit of a, a magic uh, magic time machine or a magic school bus or something like that. Uh, and that, so, so we've got a whole storyline around some of these tools and, and how we chase uh, Desmond Discord and, and try to get our, our estimate. Um, but but the stories differ from mission to mission. We're going to have 10 missions. Uh, each of those 10 missions actually teaches a part of what you call the four spheres of the Earth. So the first two are the hydrosphere. So we really want we work on water in the very first mission, the hydrologic cycle. Talk about evaporation, precipitation, and so on, and how that interacts with the Earth. And that whole Turner story, Turner Falls story that I just gave you, is actually a lesson within that module mission and our second mission is around erosion and weather how water shapes the earth right and so we look at lands and canyons and hills those kinds of things glaciers even sometimes we have to leave oklahoma as awesome as oklahoma is um you know we go to you know colorado to the rockies when we want to look at glaciers because they're in short supply here (laughs) yeah um you know we've gone to the mississippi delta taken a boat out to the end of it those kinds of things are, are very good places where you can tell stories, but we relate it back to this part of the world. Oh, so there, there's a lot in there, you know, and what, you know, the next uh, two missions will be about the, or actually the next four missions will be out the geosphere or the lithosphere, which is the, the hard rocky part of the earth. And then we'll wrap up with the atmosphere and biosphere at the end. So by the end of it, teachers will have a complete storyline, you know, education tool that that's kind of fun. There's a kooky story that goes with it. It's got some interactivity and it features all these awesome Oklahoma places. So I, I think, I think anyone that gets in there and plays with it and uh, I think would appreciate all the, <laughs> all of the, the thought and work that's gone behind it. Uh, I can definitely see the, the thought and work going into it. And other than say 46 year old men from central Oklahoma, uh, who who's it really geared towards? What what age brackets are you really shooting for? We're we're shooting for that fourth to sixth grade. That's our that is our central point. Um, we want to make this standard. So we've gone uh, from the educational side. We really tie back to the standards. Uh, so the the things that are needing to be taught. You know, we've got new standards coming out this year, and sixth grade is going to be our our big grade. But to be honest, um, you know, I, I get emails from from, from parents that have kindergartners or have second graders, third graders, uh, that, that love to get in it. And it's amazing what they learn at those ages. It's just, um, the material for, for public and, and for, for Oklahoma schools, um, is geared toward that fourth, fifth, sixth grade uh, age range. So, which is about what my true intelligence or, or education level really is. So <laughs> I think that's probably why it's such a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's it sounds great it sounds like a great program and you guys have quite quite a long road ahead of you to to round out the whole project um how can people best keep up with your project or learn more about everyday earth that's a great question so we have they can come to the website for everyday earth itself which is uh, www.everyday-earth.com everyday all one word um, or they can follow us on social media at Geology Video um, and find all sorts. Of, we've got Facebook pages. We've got uh, uh, we're all over the internet. As a matter of fact, that we have a lot of material um, and other programs out there. We have a YouTube program called Geology Kitchen, which is a, one that's currently being used in a lot of schools, where we basically use food to teach Earth science concepts, which is kind of cool. And you can, anyone can can see those programs as well. Um, so yeah, we, we, you know, they can, they can go to the site, follow us on social media at geology video. And, um, you know, I, we, uh, (laughs) 
you know, there's there's emails on there, and I would say anybody out there that looks at that stuff and has a great idea for a potential lesson, shoot us shoot us an email. We like to hear we like to hear stuff like that. Perfect, so. perfect. Well, Doctor D, we really appreciate you being on the show. It's been educational. <laughs> Fantastic. So that's that's what I'm here for. So no, I appreciate everybody. I appreciate the interest in Everyday Earth, and, and hope everybody goes and checks it out. And we're back. We're back. And we're interactive. It's the state of the universe right now. I, I kind of feel like if you're not doing it from... Everybody's homeschooling. Well, the yeah. thing about this, this is a two-year-old problem. I mean, yeah. it's two years in the making with you know several more left to go. But now, more than ever, it seems like it's more important than maybe, you know? I really feel like, uh, no matter your stance on COVID-19, right. I really feel like there are going to be a lot of people moving forward who decide they want a more prominent role in their children's education, which I think is great. Is this, in your opinion, a step towards some type of, I hate to say it, everybody says the embrace the new normal. Do you think, in your opinion, from talking to him, that this is something we're going to see more of? Yeah, well, for sure. I, I'm honestly surprised that we don't already have more of it in our society right mm -hmm. now. Because it's something that you can have, you know, a few people mm -hmm. educate a lot of people, obviously. Right. How many people go to YouTube to learn how to change the alternator in a 2001 Honda Civic? Two that I'm aware of. <laughs> right. But that's not going away. Right. So anytime anybody needs to go and change the alternator in a 2001 Honda Civic. There will always be a market for that. It's always going to be there. That guy doesn't have to go and individually teach every single mm -hmm. person how to do this. He did it one time. So it, it's already happening in, outside well, it, of the education system. Well, it happens not even, uh, not even at your, uh, your elementary, high school, junior high level. College professors have been doing it for a while. I know some adjunct professors at OU that do video. Their primary function is doing video classes for the masses, basically. Right. So it's not a new it's not a new concept. Even I just think it's going to be more prevalent. People right. I think over the last few weeks, the last few months, people have seen how much work their kids do on a on a regular basis. They have a lot of people have enjoyed being a part of it. A lot of people have enjoyed taking the lessons and expanding them, mm -hmm. spending more time with their kids uh, involved in their education. So I honestly I honestly believe you'll see a an uptick in this type of activity. Yeah, it's it's kind of taking homeschool to to the next level. But enough of us pontificating right. upon the future of mm -hmm. education. How about the future of us? No, come on, what? Dr. Denny. Oh yeah, yeah. The guy is wicked smart. Wicked wicked smart, great great personality. You, you know, you put doctor on the front of anyone's name uh, and you immediately go, "Oh, man, this is going to be a snoozer." I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I've met a few doctors that weren't, I mean, typically the ones that are dealing psychi psychiatry or psychi psychiatrics have a little bit more character. Uh, but yeah. I think the guy's got a great personality for it. You can tell. I mean, he's really polished. Uh -huh. And I think that he has a, he's kind got of a hand the, on the, the Bill Nye yeah. kind of yeah. vibe or... It's cool to be, you know, it's it's hip to it's hip to be square. It's not even that. He's just good at. It. He's <laughs> right. good at presenting the information. Right. When he was talking about Turner Falls, you were engaged. I, I was enthralled. Right. Could have listened to him talk about that for the next two hours. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he got a good presentation. He's engaging. The information, the way he's honed it, yeah. is uh, is relevant, mm -hmm. educational, and fun. Right. So I, I'm super impressed. Well, great interview. And, and we've got more things from us on the way. I know we've been kind of trickling in and trying to make time. But I think we, I don't want to do say too much, but I think we're, we're, we're actively pursuing some really cool things, I think. I agree with that 100%. And with that, this has been the Only an OK Show. I am Harley. And I'm Brett. And we are out of here. Peace.
the Muppets. 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 So I have, uh, I got a record player for my birthday. I saw. One of the albums that I bought myself a while back was the Muppet Movie soundtrack. So I put it on, and the first song on the soundtrack is Rainbow Connection. I cried. <laughs> Seriously. I believe you. The Rainbow Connection. I was like, I'm done. I, I was sitting there, and I started, and I had to stop. She's like, what? I, I said, I can't listen to it anymore. The words are so poignant to, the, to today. I cried. Why are the words so poignant to today? Listen to it. Listen to Rainbow Connection. I don't want to. Can you just explain? I don't need to. I don't need a media. It's no. Stop it. You're going to do that. No. I don't need a media presentation to understand something. Can you just. Okay. Let me do it. Let me illustrate it for you. Give me a second. No. Yep. Dude, I'll leave the room. I'm not kidding. Because you don't want to cry? Because I don't have time for that shit. Yes, you do. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions. They're only illusions. And rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some chose, to believe it, but I know they're wrong and wait to see, or wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on a morning star? Somebody thought of that, and somebody believed it. And look what it's done so far. Come on. What are you doing? We're not doing Hildagos. I said Hildagos. God dang it. We're not doing Hildagos. You got what? Why? Why? Really? It's two miles from my house. Hidalgos. We're not doing Hildagos. We're not. We're doing Hidalgos. We've already done Hidalgos. Hidalgos. It's hard not to say it. Say it right now. Hidalgos? You did it. <laughs> you did say Hidalgos. Right? Hidalgos. Hidalgos. Yeah, not hill doggos. No, or not hidagos. You said hidagos. You sure did. I did not say L's twice. You said hidago. You did. You went hidagos. No, I didn't. Say I it. got the I got the right L in the say right, right place. Hidalgo. You just said hidago. You did. Hidalgo. You went hidago. No, anyway. I did not. You can't hear. Okay. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. We had a chance to talk to uh, Dr. Devin Denny, 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 let me say it again, please. Three, two, one. 